welcome to week 2 lecture 2 principles of training 2 objective of lecture 2 is again to recollect and recall fundamental principles of training and to know principles of overload the outcome of lecture 2 is to describe the principle of overload and to describe the load theories so at the end of this lecture you should able to describe the principles of overload and you should able to be in a position where you could choose what type of loading paradigm is useful for your current fitness program now let's recollect the fundamental principle of training which includes acute training variables and gas principles which we covered in lecture 1 in this lecture we would be focusing on overload progression principle before you understand principle of overload principle let's understand the term training load which is a combination of frequency intensity and volume this is where we use the first principle of training that is acute training fitness variables now with respect to training load there are three different types of training load that you should be first be aware of the first is stimulation load detraining load and retaining load stimulation load is a load which is higher than your previous or the last training session a detraining load is a load a training load that is a combination of frequency intensity and volume where in compared to your previous session or the last workout session the load is much more less and a retaining load is a training load which can be same as that of your previous workout session now why is it important for you to understand the training load concept that's because in absence of a load that is let's say you are following a workout routine to achieve your to improve your fitness level and you are not considering the training load at all that is you are not considering what is the frequency intensity and volume of your workout routine in that absence you are not aware whether you are giving a stimulation load or not whether that load is a detraining load or not now recollect the gas principle the second principle of fitness training with respect to gas principle whenever you use a stimulation load only then you have a resistance phase in resistance phase you actually undergo a recovery session and you undergo an adaptation phase that is changes in the body which prepares the body to perform more better for the next session so when you are not aware whether the session that you are following is a stimulation load or not you are not sure whether you are giving a resistance phase or not in absence of a resistance phase obviously there will be no super compensation phase and thereby there will be no new baseline level so for that reason it is very important that before you start a workout routine you should be aware about whether the session you are following is a stimulation load or a detraining load and thereby you have to keep track of your training load by monitoring the frequency intensity and the volume now let's understand how this progressive overload can be implemented with the help of different loading theories which are standard load linear load step load concentrated load let's begin how do you implement progressive overload by a standard load a standard load is a similar training load that is a similar frequency intensity or volume throughout a week session or throughout the number of weeks how does it look like an x axis represent a training days and y axis represent the loading increment the load increment when you use similar frequency intensity and volume for day 1 day 3 day 5 for an example the graph looks like a flat straight line and you can see that there is no increment in the load in such situation there is stimulation only for day 1 similarly can be carried forward to a month's workout let's say d1 is week 1 d3 is week 2 and d5 is week 3 so if you follow a standard load for multiple weeks again in this case 
you are giving stimulation only in week one and recollect gas principle so you would get a response but only for week one or day one and after that there is no stimulation given so there won't be a new baseline created so standard load is not a definitely an optimal way of giving a progressive overload now let's understand what a linear load means a linear load is a continuous higher training load throughout the week or throughout of the weeks of training without a deload let's see how it can be implemented here day one you are giving a stimulation which is higher than the previous week day three is much more higher in compared to day one day five is much more higher in compared to day three so back to back you are giving a higher load in compared to the previous session and without any deload absolutely happening so thereby there is a progressive overload session by session or week by week the advantage of this type of loading is that you create a more intense workout and thereby you increase your capacity of doing more harder workout but the downfall of doing this for more than 2 3 or 4 weeks is continuously again recollecting with the gas principle you are not allowing a sufficient recovery phase thereby going it up to the super compensation phase and this may lead to an overtraining so for that reason a linear load should not be implemented more than 3 or 4 weeks now let's go to the next load theory step load a step load is a progressive overload with an interspread of deload let's consider a weeks training routine your week 1 you are giving a stimulation which is higher in compared to the previous week week 2 is much more higher stimulation in compared to week 1 but in week 3 you are giving a deload so a graph would looks like a step one step up and then one step down continue giving a progressive overload for another say 3 weeks by week 4 the uh, stimulation is much more higher in compared to week 1 or week 2 week 5 we give a second week of progressive overload but in week 6 we do a deload so the graph over a period of 6 weeks is definitely progressively increasing but it is interspread with a deload phase now in compared to linear load this type of loading allows you for a sufficient recovery and thereby gives a more opportunity to create a new baseline level now let's understand what concentrated load is a concentrated load is a short period which is defined as one week to three weeks of time of progressive overload now how it looks like you give a training load which is much more higher than your usual load so in week 1 you can see the load increment is much more higher in compared to all the st previous step loads or linear load that has been given a loading increment and in week 2 in compared to week 1 it is still more higher so it may look like a linear load but the difference is actually it is a linear load but the difference is the graph is much more stiffer so in concentration concentrated load you give a much more higher training load then you are used to so this type of load also is called as overreaching type of uh, progressive overload so you may have to use this kind of loading periodically into your training program so that you give a stimulation which is much more higher and thereby avoiding the plateau throughout your workout session so in summary recalling gas principle providing optimal stimulation and recovery is must to improve fitness level give higher load in form of higher frequency intensity or volume within the given week is called a progressive overload and the way to implement progressive overload is 
by applying load theories. In step load, you give progression in the first session or in the first week only. In linear load, you give progression without a deload and which does not lead to overtraining if implementing for longer period that is greater than 4 weeks. A step load progression has a linear load but with an interspread of deload. And a concentrated load progression demands much more higher load to be used but for a short period of time, less than 3 weeks. Thank you.